I'm here with Randy Bias, and Randy, um, your your business has the word cloud right in the title, cloud scaling. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys do and how you're helping people get to a cloud computing platform. Cloud scaling is a consultancy that helps people build large scale private and public clouds and we have a focus on telcos and service providers helping them enter the market and be competitive with folks like Amazon Web Services and Rackspace Cloud. Okay, so those are the, that is one of the challenges that telcos are finding is that suddenly the consumer services seem like they're, uh, and, and small business services are launching lots of uh, cl competitive cloud services. Um, what Are you finding the telcos are, are uh, uh, challenged in some way as they're trying to uh, become more nimble and, and launch services themselves? Yeah, well I think part of the problem is that there's a perception that the Amazons and the rack spaces are you know, focused on the SMBs and Sohos of this world, and that's actually not true. Amazon has a huge number of enterprises uh, leveraging their cloud. That's part of what my talk is about today. Um, and I think that some of the disservice that telcos are doing to themselves is believing that those are consumer-oriented um, clouds and they need to build something different. And we're, we're trying to help people understand that that's not the case. And actually, the, the correct model for cloud computing is the one that Amazon's pioneered. Oh, okay, so so the so the reality is that that they, the telcos would be wrong to dismiss Amazon as a consumer only thing. Um, a consumer only business that's gone from um, zero to five hundred million in revenue last year projected, and it'll probably be close to a billion dollars in revenue just for Amazon Web Services this year. I mean, that is a a consu consumer service that's at a hundred percent year over year growth, and I've got a list as long as my arm of enterprise businesses that are leveraging Amazon Web Services, including some of the largest in the world. World. Um, and yeah, I think it would be a tremendous mistake for them to, to dismiss Amazon. Now once they get into you know, the proper mindset of taking on Amazon and competing in there, how are they set as far as infrastructure goes? You know, the, the telcos like to say they have, they have the networks operational, they have the data centers running, they have customers on all those platforms. What about providing a cloud service is that much more challenging? So I think that in many ways the carriers do have some inherent uh, capabilities, access to you know the, wi uh, the wireless networks, IP backbones, data center facilities, but in other ways they're really behind the curve. And the folks who pioneer cloud computing are the Googles, the Amazons, the Facebooks of this world, and if you look at the techniques that they're applying to build their very large scale infrastructure, they're very different from the way that telcos and enterprises think about building uh, infrastructure. And so I, I think that you've, they've got to start to think about adopting the same uh, techniques and methodologies that the big internet players do. What's, what's an example of a technique that like Amazon is, is putting into practice in its cloud computing platform that's, that's wildly different than what we're seeing in the, in the traditional telco infrastructure? Um, so some great examples, um, you know, there's a few I can just give you is that it's predominantly commodity hardware. And part of what that means is that, is that there's no brand name vendors. All of the traditional vendors you would think of in the network, Cisco, Juniper, folks like that do, are not there. They're not using Cisco switches. They're actually using Taiwanese uh, manufactured switches. And the same goes for servers and storage as well. Now when you're, when you're talking about using commodity hardware, building you know, fast and cheap and, and widely available, does that, I can see how that would give the telcos some concern because they're used to um, reliability, five nines and all of that stuff. Does, is, there, is there an inherent conflict there or is that just the nature of cloud services? I, I, I think again, it's one of those things where their perception's not in step with reality. Um, the service providers with the highest uptime in the world are really the internet web properties and they have been for 10 plus years now. And when you look at how they're doing it though, they're really de depending on software to be that the way that they design for failure. Whereas I think a lot of the telcos and carriers are trying to um, get five nines of availability out of hardware, and a lot of time hardware can't give you the same kind of uptime that software can, especially when you're at massive, massive scale. Um, Google is running one to two million servers and has you know, probably much more than five nines of uptime, and they're doing it by thinking about the way that software runs on top of commodity hardware. There's a lot going on here. We've got a technology shift, a cultural shift, and a mindset exactly. shift that the telcos have to absorb. Do you, do you feel like they're, you know, they're, they're uh, going to be able to you know, make a change in the next couple of years and really 
throw up some services that compete with uh, Amazon uh, as, as, as capably as, as they've done in other areas. Yeah, I mean, we see it happening already. We, we launched Korea Telecom's um, cloud to market in Korea uh, last year, three of them actually, and they came in at 20% under Amazon Web Services pricing and still have a significant gross margin. So um, there are visionaries and leaders out there who are showing the rest of the uh, carriers um, how to do it right. I think the challenge, though, is that um, there's still a, a certain amount of fail forward that needs to happen. People are still going to spend tens to hundreds of millions of dollars to learn how not to do things. Um, hopefully that won't take too long. Um, but, you know, we're here to sort of try to help sort that out. And so hopefully, um, you know, they, they will come up to speed sooner rather than later. Okay, Randy, thanks very much for talking with LRTV. Thanks, Phil.